Appamada's programmes and facilities are supported through your generosity. Your support really does make a huge difference. You'll find a link for contributions on the website at appamada.org forward slash contribute. Thank you so much. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Vast is the robe of liberation, a formless field of benefaction. Wearing the universal teaching, I realize the one true nature, thus harmonizing all being. Goodness. I'm uh, just thrilled that we have three folks who will be completing this week and another for next. Um, and then Sue sends her regards. She's um, very near. She has. Uh, she's completed her rock suit itself and is working on her envelope. Um, and but she's with family um, today, I believe, if I remember the reason correctly. Um, so she's not going to be able to make it. And sends her regards. So yeah, got a, a lot of folks. I, I take it. Um, so I guess yes. Let's go ahead and um, allow Claire to um, to finish uh, what she's working on. And then we can do that, that completion ceremony. Um, so I guess let's begin with a check-in for those who are um, not here for the completion ceremony. Looks like we have Hillary, Shelley, Rosemary, and Marla. Would any of you like to go first, um, checking in or uh, asking any questions that you have? I think Rosemary, you were um, ready to start. Yeah, because um, I'm just very simple. Um... I've got um, my squares pinned. That's it. You know, I'm on my third pinning of my uh, fourth pinning of my squares, and then I'll guess I'll start to uh, begin to attach them. So that's no questions. That's where I'm at. Thank Wonderful. you. Yeah, thank you, Marisa. Mm -hmm. um, John, after I sent you the <laughs> my email last night about my horrible discovery, um, I kind of I think I solved it. Not solved it, but I have it i'm already working on the mitigation of that and it's not as dire as i thought last night great yeah and so you're you don't have questions on on that no what i'm doing is i'm not having to tear out as much as i thought i would i only have to do that one corner because i can certainly resew it without yeah and you should be able to stay just in those top layers and it should functionally end up the same as as if you had done it um i hope yeah. If we don't, we'll cross that bridge. I don't think I've, I've never encountered this. So um, this will. <laughs> Here I go, breaking new ground. Yes. Yes. And, um, but I'll be grateful to learn if um, I, I think it will be simple and I think it will be easy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sophie, we're just checking in. Just four of us are still working on them. Um, we've got three here who are doing their completion ceremony today and two who are guests um, for the, the completion ceremony. Um, but we're giving Claire a moment to, to wrap up. So just doing check-ins. Okay. I think Hillary and Shelly and you are, are next. Looks like Hillary's raising. Okay. Have I unmuted? Yes. yes um, I've done my front um, front face first sewing on mm -hmm. of the frame. And now I'm just, I'm about to, to pin the back. Haven't pinned the back yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I was doing just before was I was measuring, um, to try and get the frame uh, sort of equal on the back as it is on the front. Now it's, it's, it's not going to be exactly the same size on the back as it is on the front. And it looks like the sides are going to be closer to four centimetres. And the top and the bottom are going to be closer to 4.3 or 4. 
That'd be, that's perfect. Does that simple. make sense? You'd expect yeah. that, would you? Because it is rectangular, but it's not like this. Like I say, the sides are a bit narrower than the top and the bottom. Yeah, there's a lot of so each of those corners, even one millimeter extra being folded folded under and kind of lost in those folds can translate to whole millimeters on the front and back. And if you remember, I mentioned how we're going to prioritize matching line to line, the seam allowance around the face and the frame on the face. We're going to prioritize that. And yours looks great. It looks like you were able to get a nice even frame around the front. Yes. And then what happens on the back and back, whatever happens, happens. I think if you were maybe 3.5 uh, centimeters and then like five centimeters, if you were outside of that range, I think that that might be, yeah, you might want to double no. check that nothing went awry, but you sound, yeah, that sounds perfectly reasonable. Okay, so it's balanced on the back, but it's different from the front. And um, yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Great, yeah. thanks, John. You're welcome. Yeah, Shelly? So I, I have my straps uh, attached on one side. So I just have the one side to do and the pine needle stitch. But when I wasn't sure how to do the neck piece, I actually started on my envelope. So I'm just about done my envelope and it's confounded me this last seam. So the, the so, very final one. Yeah. So you know on the instructions how it says um turn the the um the lining so that it's on the outside. Mm -hmm. So am I sewing this seam through these three? So it's got like the open side mm -hmm. and the lining. On I'm that, sewing lining that, that and then I'm turning that under and putting an invisible stitch for that last piece of the, like the, that seam is hidden by the lining. I believe when I do so. The invisible stitch. Let me reread briefly. I believe you're. I believe you've stated it exactly correct. Where those three give the structure, and then there's one final um, invisible stitch. Because my my lining is quite delicate mm -hmm. and I wondered whether turning the seam to the inside and stitching would give me a cleaner line which pinning you said pinning the seams to the inside what did you mean by that so you know where we have these three so we've yeah. got the lining and these two that are together if I if I turn these inside, both of these to the inside, mm -hmm. then that seam would be inside. I don't see how that would confer a benefit though. With okay. the delicate fabric. I understand okay. what you're what you're meaning. I'm trying to remember thinking ge like geometrically if that would turn out the same once it's inverted. I suppose it might. I've had it in and out a few times already, but yeah, because <laughs> I did it backwards first time, first two times. <laughs> it is. This is definitely one of those origami phases where you just uh, tr trusting that it will turn out. Okay. So, so yeah, I think so. Can so you you had demonstrated an understanding of your next step but you're concerned that the fineness of the material is going to be a limitation. Yeah. Okay. I can just try it and see. I, hmm. It's so fine that, yeah, I think try it. Yeah, try the instruction method. Okay. And if in the, just the first few stitches, you're finding that fi the, the, your concerns about the material um, are, are playing out, then call my attention and we can revisit. Okay. Because it's, it's going to be that final, that final hidden stitch you think that's going to be the, the delicate one, right? Because it's not, it's that single layer of silk that's being turned over and hidden stitch. Yeah, and I think I'm not 100% sure on how to do the hidden stitch. So a little bit more on that later would be great. Okay.
Sounds thank great. you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Sophie, I think, yeah, I think you're the, uh, how are you doing? So hi everyone, lovely to see you and to be part. Um, I haven't done much, but I've I've been redoing uh, the 2A and 2B. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope it is enough on this side uh, above the line. But for little, some reason... It seems to me that it is a little, on one end it is above the line and on one end it is below the line. Do you see on the yeah. left, it yeah. is slightly below? Yeah, yeah, it is. You're right. So I will redo that. <laughs> and and, re and I haven't been able to do the, the other, the four A and B together. Uh, for some reason, when I'm pinning, I I seems to be too, too close to the line, maybe. Maybe, but, yeah. Yeah, but my, my brain uh, doesn't understand how to do it so that it's not so close, yeah. Do Would you like me to um, make a suggestion on how to do that? That would be lovely, thank you. Yeah. Let me Let me see if I have a demonstration piece that will work well for this. So I'm going to do first line to first line, Sophie. So this won't be... Yeah perfectly analogous is that going to to work for you yeah if i do it okay so let's pretend that we're looking at the second line of a so there's going this would be there'd be more material down to about here there'd be another yeah. line here and this would be that second line so what what i'm going to do so i'm going to, i'm not holding the second piece of fabric yet it's in place roughly yeah. I'm going to go in straight through the crosshair to the best yeah. of my ability, just square on in the middle. And then on this left side, I'm going to actually pick up the material mm -hmm. and place the pin, have it come out where I, with that distance that I need. So here we're looking at about 2.5 millimeters, perhaps. Yeah. Away. So that's so that will allow me to know that that's pinned um, where I want it. I'm going to leave this just with the single penetration for now. I'm not going to finish pinning on this side. What I'll do next is I will go to this right edge. Yeah. I will go directly through the crosshair. Yeah. And again, I'm going to watch from the back, going through the vertical line and about 2.5 millimeters above. Above the line. Above the yeah. line, yes. Yeah. And that should, so from there, you can manipulate the fabric until both pins are perfectly perpendicular. Yeah. So you're you from both the side and from above, they should yeah. be pretty perpendicular. Yeah. And you might even add one more just as another point of reference. But I should be able to trust now that if I do this step and then pin exactly line to line, yeah, that it should be pretty well. It should be aligned at this point. The, I think so at, this, at this phase, the line to line is going to be the tricky part that you want to, to watch for. Yeah. So really what I want to do when I pin on the A side is I want to pin on the B 2.5 millimeters above the line. Yes, exactly right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Very yes. I hope that works for you. Good, good. I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> Well, uh, I think, um, yeah, try. Mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But it's help very helpful. Thank you. Um, could I please ask a, a random question, John? Yes. 
Um, I've really enjoyed doing the sewing and it's really meant a lot to me. I'm thinking of sewing um, a little cushion that my singing bowl can sit on. Is it appropriate to, to use the NKB stitch to do that because it's still sort of devotional or should it be reserved just for robes? Mm. Mm. That's a question that I, you know, that really is a random question. I, I hadn't, <laughs> I had not expected that. Um, hmm. I was wondering that too. So thanks for asking that, Claire. No worries. This is a traditional matter. So my judgment alone probably should not be the basis for this. I, I can explain my, my current thinking, and that is um, using it for a t-shirt, probably not. But using it for the cushion for your singing bowl, that seems to be, um, it's all, it's an object of dharma. It is something that comes to us in practice and that we, that, that, that is part of, of pr the, the practice um, world. Part of me immediately says, that's very dual thinking, John. It's all practice, isn't it? So why can't you wear it everywhere? But then why can't I eat while wearing a rocket suit, you know? Um, so my gut inclination is I believe that that's acceptable. And I think that using it for other uh, objects of Dharma would be acceptable. Um, I will say, um, are you, sorry, are you referring to the hidden stitches that will end up not visible once you invert the, are you, are you going to intentionally do it in such a way that those stitches would become visible on the finished side, on the right side? I, ha I haven't even thought about how I'm going, what, what exactly I'm going to sew or how I'm going to sew it, but it was mm. a feeling of that I'm going to miss the sewing practice. Mm. Yes. I, I wondered if there were others who needed rakasus that we could sew for. That was the other question I had. As that is um, absolutely the case. The I can there's a um, on the Apamata website. There's a scholarly paper, and it kind of reads like one uh, called Fukudenkai, and it is about the practice with the same name that is sewing groups in Japan affiliated with sendos that come together and sew rakasu for um, you know, uh, folks who don't have the dexterity, the vision, whatever the case may be to sew their own. Um, we've had, uh, I think Trudy can speak to what the experience is like in supporting someone in that practice. So, and then that's what um, I've got it here in a box. I have finished a rakasu face uh, and then have all the pieces for the straps ready to go um, for donation. I'm going to send that back to the Austin Apamata. So it's absolutely a practice that you can continue and you don't need, I don't think you need to have somebody ready to accept the rakasu. To, to, so maybe you can do that. Um, Shelly, the affirmative on your question, yes. Um, Claire, that's an idea for one way for you to continue the sewing practice. Mm. And let me get back to you on the Namu Kebutsu on the singing bowl cushion. I've always seen them with inverted, so the stitch isn't visible. Mm. So I wonder, that's beyond my, uh, I'd have to really think about that pattern. To... Thank you. Yeah, we'll get back to you. Just an idea, um, Claire, was I was thinking about the beautiful pin cushions that Lynn makes, and mm. they are almost like a singing bowl cushion. So she would have a pattern for that, I think. Um, That's a great idea. Because uh, mm. it's almost exactly the same sort of shape. Yeah, thank you. Slightly less filling, and it's basically the same yeah. exact item. And, and um, in terms of sewing for someone else, it's just been the main, just a real joy, and um, it's felt very precious to do. And I'm, I too, am missing, 
missing the sewing um, practice. So that's a, it'd be interesting to have a group of us just sewing for future possible uh, offerings. And I do think that there is likely going to be, um, it seems like there's enough folks interested in sewing in the UK that y'all may be able to support your own um, sewing group and have a little more flexibility in what time of day works best for y'all. Mm. So that's that's another, that's how I got into becoming a sewing teacher. I liked the sewing practice enough and wanted to um, contribute a revised version of these instructions um, at some point in the future once I felt comfortable. That was, those were the two motivations to becoming a teacher myself. Mm. So, there's, thank you. John, would you be able to demonstrate the invisible stitch? For the silk, yes. There are a handful of different methods. Uh, and I think for silk, I don't have silk with me. So I'm going to use uh, not silk, cotton. This is the method. So I'm going to admit ignorance from the outset of um, invisible hidden stitches are, are a core competency for hand sewers um, since time immemorial. And it is something that the only hidden stitch I have ever done is the one that I have learned for this practice. And I'm certain there must be many, many more methods of doing it. Um, so I want to invite any of the experienced sewists that are here with us today, if you have an alternate version than what I demonstrate, uh, you're invited to, uh, to offer those as well. I've used it though on quite a number of things at this point and it always seems to work, and even including some that are um, pretty instructionally intensive, including pillows, so I think it's a it's a pretty robust. So I'm really folding these edges down tightly as though I were pressing it. And with silk, you may not have this luxury so so much. Um, some silks are somewhat resi resistant to creasing. And then once you crease them, they stay creased forever, such as silk. Okay. So for the sake of this demonstration, these are going to, this is going to be two pieces of silk. Uh, one will be the edge that you had already turned, you've, you've turned over first that included the, the three layers of material. And the other will be the side that you just folded under. And it is not hugely important, um, sort of conceptually, which side the uh, the seam allowances are being pushed to. Often, you know, you have like this idea of one side gets the seam allowances and the other does not. In this case, uh, prefer the side that has the three layers of fabric. So. Let's say that this is the side with the three layers of fabric, and this is the side with the, the one. Um, we're going to attempt to catch a single layer of cotton, and that is um, <laughs> uh, devilish in, uh, in challenge because right now you're inverted. So you're going to have to keep, you're going to have to open the envelope and check routinely to make sure you're not going all the way through. The silk to silk might be an option if you had a stronger silk, but you've already expressed a, a concern around that. So let's go ahead and assume that you're going to need to catch a layer of cotton. Let's see if I can catch it. Can Cut a length for mm, maybe twice the length that you need. You needn't do a back stitch, but I do. Um, yeah, I like to, to get it pretty, pretty 
pretty tight. If you have a needle that has developed a curve through use, that may actually come in handy now if you feel comfortable and confident that you're, that you're skilled to use it. Um, for this stitch, I believe I prefer starting in the corner and using a small knot you pop into the silk, um, by which I mean, basically you, you, you make your starting knot, but instead of making four or five starting loops, you simply make one or two I'm going to do, I think that counts as two. So, um, so it makes a smaller knot. And this smaller knot, you should be able to just pop through one layer of silk so it becomes hidden as well. And then from there, you have to exercise great care not to pop it again. And if you start from what will become the corner of the envelope, um, which will be very deep, deep inside it. No one is going to open your you know, envelope and scrutinize that corner. Uh, if anyone, it would be me, I guess. And uh, I'm going to have a hard time doing that from Illinois. So um, you should be pretty confident if you start from that corner. And then uh, visualizing or moving. If, if you're able to, so let's assume the side away from me is the side that has the, the layers of cotton. If you're able to get a, um, catch the, the layer of cotton and then pop the, the needle through just the silk or pop, pop the, the knot through just the silk, uh, and then the cotton may resist it better. So that may be handy uh, to start toward the side with the cotton layer. In fact, why don't I see if I can use this back layer to demonstrate what would be happening. This would be invisible, what I'm going to attempt to demonstrate. So basically, you've got, I don't know if this is Wayne or Wift at this point, but you've got these threads running in the direction of the fold. And maybe go two, three threads down from where you want the final um, thing to sit. If you do it too tight, it will strain. Um, so if you feel like right now, if you laid it flat and you got it all laid out and you compare that corner and how much tension is in the line that is not already sewn. And if you think about how much tension is going to end up in this uh, one that you're about to sew, once it's inverted, if you feel like it's already very tense and tight, um, maybe just do skip one or two threads. But I would say three is probably my go-to for these hidden stitches. So I'm going to go through and pretending that there's a invisible layer of, of fabric that is where my thumb is now, I'm going to try to miss that and just get that one layer of cotton go maybe three or four of the, the opposite direction threads in the other direction. So this would be invisible. What, what you're seeing now, this would be covered by another layer of cotton on the far side. You, could, you can open the uh, envelope that's inside out and, and peek to see where that's at. And you'll want to come back in and catch the, the same distance in. So if it was two threads, it was two threads. If it's three threads, three threads in from your folded seam and go, you know, two millimeters maybe and come out. And you want to very quickly try to catch the other layer, the other fabric uh, of the opposing side. You don't want to when this is done, you don't wanna be able to peel open this hidden stitch and see long diagonals where um, the it came out over here and went in over here. You don't want that. If possible, you want them to be as near to each other that when those two layers of fabric are pressed close together, that it's 
almost no diagonal. That's the, the ideal. That will help make sure that it is structurally sound. There's no wobble or play. And it's, I'm making it look too easy because I have the benefit of working with cotton and I'm showing you this invisible hidden side. But it is roughly this. I think if I'm remembering correctly, I can rarely get more than two stitches so I'm, before I need to pull my thread all the way through. So let me do that. So I don't mislead you on how the actual level of difficulty. So I'm basically running the needle through the center of where those two things join mm -hmm. and catching above and below. Yes, that's, okay. that's exactly right. You're, like you're kind of prying open this chasm and sewing within it very carefully and trying only to catch um, the only visible error on my, um, my envelope was I went all the way through to the showing side in one, in one place. And there's a little visible stitch there. But uh, so it's definitely, definitely tricky. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. If you have any questions, let me know. And then this, this is a general sewing technique. This is not uh, specific to this tradition. So if you want to look online for, you know, Western or Eastern sewing tradition hidden stitches, by all means, just it's the same technique. I've uh, completed my Rakasu now. Um, Wonderful. So yeah, thank you for everyone's patience who was only here for the ceremonies. I, I had an attachment to the idea of uh, finishing it in a class rather than by myself. That's, that's nice in its way. I think it turned out okay. One's here, Trudy's here. Okay. So we have Julia, Maria, and Claire all have uh, finished their rakasu. I think I'm going to do the more simple, I won't be queuing y'all with any particular things to do. I will set the the tone and remind everyone that this generally starts at the altar. The teacher is at the altar and the students are to the right. And the there is the traditional incensing. Each robe is incensed over the incense three times and then turn. This teacher will turn to the student and say what I'm going to say. And then there will be the traditional Zen, the student bows to say, I am receiving, they receive the rakasu, the teacher bows to them, and that completes the ceremony. For today, we will do the, um, the spoken part, and then we will trade bows. So, Julia, Maria, and Claire, you have each sewn Buddha's robe using a pattern developed by Ananda and Buddha themselves. When your teacher gives you this robe and the precepts, they will nourish and protect you always. It has been an honor to sew with you, both with all of you. You've each brought insight and skill to this class. You've brought valuable questions for me, and I've been grateful for your contributions, and I'm grateful for your dedication to this practice. It has been an honor to be your sewing teacher, and I wish you well. And it has become customary now on remote uh, completion ceremonies, I think, to add to the connection. Would you, each of you be willing to share just a little bit of, of your experience, a little bit of, of what this practice has been for you? And no is acceptable. You do not have to, but uh, volunteers are welcome. Yeah, I, it, as I said before, it's been, um... It's been a really important practice for me. It's resonated hugely. It's really supported me to be less heady with my practice and to be uh, to slightly lessen my grip on the illusion of separateness and independence and to 
actually really feel how it's everyone that sews every rakasu um and it's that's been yeah it's been um a, a really wonderful experience for me so thank you so much john for all your teaching and thank you so much to everyone for um sewing the rakasu together Yeah, shall I go next? Yeah, please do. Yeah, well, I found it quite a remarkable practice, really, and uh, how it, it does hold up everything <laughs> that you are in your daily life kind of shows up when you're, when you're sewing the, um, the rakasu. But what it's also taught me is that we talk about a part that's not touched by coming and going. And I think mm -hmm. what making the rakasu has really supported me is to kind of get closer to that part that was always there that, that it wasn't touched by anything and I, I'd be getting confused and anxious and worried and concerned about not being able to do something but there's always that part that's steady and keeps going and, and has a kind of a calmness about it so it's really helped me to get in touch with with that part and I think like so in Arakasu we say dealing with others is dealing with ourselves dealing with others but I think making a rakasu is like dealing with all of our parts dealing with all of our parts <laughs> you know it's like it brings it's brought up for me all my different parts of I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this but really helping me to stay in that disturbance to kind of stay with it and I think that's the community as well and everybody else and the way that we've we've done it this way together has really helped me to because I didn't think I could make it it looks impossible when you see it at the beginning and it reminded me of when I was learning to drive and my instructor kept saying to me, you can do this, Maria. And I'd be like, no, <laughs> I can't do it. And there was the same kind of approach to, to the rackers who like, this is impossible. I could see Lynn and Trudy making the straps. And I was like, oh, when I get to that part, I'm just going to give up. You know, it looks so complicated. So it's really taught me to just, you know, stay with that not knowing mind. You know, I, did, I don't know whether I could make it or not. That's a story. That's a belief. That's an internal dialogue that's just going on inside of me. And to let go of that and to soften that. And I think what doing the Rakasu has really supported me to do is soften a lot of those beliefs, to, to, to spot them in action and to really kind of just stay with them and watch them soften and see them as stories, as beliefs, rather than driving me in the front seat of the bus. They've got in the back seat, they're still there but I can kind of recognize them when they're, when they're raising up and I can just be like, Shh, it's all right, <laughs> we've got this, you know, we've got this. So it's been a really deep practice for me of uh, and doing the editing of the videos and things, just going through them in detail and, and in bits and being very, very close in that way as well has really supported me to be closer to everyone in the process as well. It's had quite a remarkable effect on me doing that. It's been quite an honour, even though it's hard work. It's 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 been an honour to just be so close to each person's practice and to watch each person go through the process and for that to embed in me and carry me as well. So, yeah, I want to thank everybody for for carrying me through this process and for teaching me that we don't do anything alone, that we do need to ask for help and 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 to be vulnerable. You know, it, it's taught me to be vulnerable and to not know. And it's OK. And to just stay with it and things will unfold step by step. You know, and it's, uh, yeah, and to just stay. It just stay. It's like with this practice, isn't it? They say just stay you know and you'll see just stay so yeah it's been very very rich i can't believe i've made one <laughs> it's like i was looking at it on the table and i was like whoa <laughs> you've made that you know i sent my niece a photograph of it and she was like oh my goodness you know all the different oh that, what by hand they make you do that by hand <laughs> yes. so that made me do it <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's a, and it's the doing it by hand, isn't it? Feeling your own body and your own being and your own kind of um, react reactivity and responses to every stitch as you go along. Um, so yeah, and thank you so much, John, for all your teachings and um, goodness me, you know, and, and how you've broke it down and 
and uh, really took us through. So it's uh, really, really grateful for that. So thank you. I'll shut up now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Maria. Julie? Hi. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me was even making the decision to join the group. Um, and that kind of comes back to some massive feelings I have about belonging and separateness and worthiness and should I be here? Is this for me? Um, and commitment. And I want to thank Hillary because it was Hillary who said, come on, let's do it. And the idea of sitting alongside um as you know sang a sister and and doing this together was really really very important um and i've i've loved doing it and i needed to spend time by myself doing it because i found that during these um these sessions i was learning things but then i actually needed to just sit with myself and and, and think about um well, I concentrated because my stitches were terribly random when I was trying to look at the what was going on the, on the screen as well as uh, as well as stitching. Um, but also just think about some of the things that it raised for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, sat with the verse of the road time and time again, and uh, in my little. Um, Rakasu retreat. And what I found was um, this balance between thinking you know how to sew and resistance about being told what to do, because I'm not very good at being told what to do, um, and finding that if you don't follow the instructions, you get it wrong. And I just loved following in the footsteps of Maria, because it felt as if every time I was stuck, she was there asking the same question. <laughs> Well, thank you, Maria. Um, and thank you to the people who have gone before last year, because looking back at those videos was so important. Um, yeah, and I, I will miss this. I will miss this as, um, as a joint enterprise. And for me, can I... I'm going to just share a little bit of um, what I thought of with the when I was doing it. Um, in terms of the, the robe, is that all right? Sure. So um, if we look at the robe chart, it's like vast is the robe of liberation. And I felt that this practice actually helped me to give a voice to those areas that needed some liberation. And then the formless field of benefaction. I thought of all those little tiles on the front and... I was sewing together all those thoughts that had gone through me about belonging, about doubt, about worthlessness, about wonder. And these were all things that were being sewn together. And then I saw the, um, the frame. The frame was the um, precepts that held things together that held all these doubts and all these questions together. Um, and the straps, the straps were like the, the sanghas that were supporting two straps, one for Appamada and one for just this. And so I felt that the, I, I did take it a step farther and say that the little um, neck piece at the back was like the little tiles that we have on the Zoom with the mm -hmm. pattern going backwards and forwards, looking out and looking in. And the envelope was like the universe that we slipped all of that into. So that was my Rakasu reflections. <laughs> Wow. Maybe Ted, uh, 
I feel honored. Uh, I know that that's kind of part of the quote script of the ceremony, but it really has been an honor to to be with y'all and to be party to your uh, your practice and to uh, I guess maintain the container that the practice occurs in. Um, it sounds like each of you had a really powerful experience of both relative practice edges, you know, existing in the day-to-day -day discerning part of, of life. And it also sounds like each of you touched some of the ultimate, um, you know, the absolute versus the relative, that whole whole concept. So I think it, they're both in this practice. And in the Japanese version of the chant, we don't, there's not the um, I, the I in, in our chant, in our version of the chant is more uh, ambiguous who that subject is and it can really give to this uh, underlying um, emptiness. And, it's, and each of you did mention that. You also mentioned your, your personal, um, you know, your, your personal practice edges. And it's just so wonderful and uh, I'm touched to, to be part of this. Yeah, I don't want to, I am not a Dharma teacher, so I'm gonna withhold what I was thinking, um, but it's really, it's really an honor, and I'm so happy that each of you were able to, to stick with it, with the doubts, with the practice edges, with the um, all the different little things that come up in this. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of you all. Okay. Well, uh, that is the ceremony then. So I think... Um, for the three involved in the ceremony and the two who attended just for it, if you would like to um, go about your day, by all means, you are also welcome to stay for the entire duration of the, the remaining class, as you choose. Congratulations, Clara, Maria, Julia. It's very inspiring to me. Oh, thank you. And to say congratulations too. Congratulations Wonderful. to you all. Wonderful. Wonderful to see everybody yeah. in this practice. Look I'm going to go. seeing all of you elsewhere in the Zoomiverse, you know? <laughs> I like that Zoomiverse. <laughs> Zoomiverse. Yes. In the next piece. Congratulations to everyone. And um, I just wanted to say, John, um, I'm looking forward to when you drop your delusion about not being a Dharma teacher. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> not being transmitted. How about that? Let me be more specific. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. <laughs> I think I've learned so much from you. You still so, have a point. Uh, really grateful and really grateful to all the companions. And um, I love what we've, what we've met, what we've sewn together. So thank you all. Mm. Another Rakasu. <laughs> Another Rakasu. <laughs> this is like, the screen is like a little patchwork, right? <laughs> yes. So I shall go to, but um, I, I may be picking up helping someone else with a Rakasu, so I, I may well be back. <laughs> and and is, it, is it possible for us to know when other people have completed so we can come to their completion ceremony? Well, that would be lovely. Oh, yes. Yeah, I will. I have the current list of participants, so I will. Um, it will be hard for me to know when exactly you, um, when each of you, um, how your group overlaps with other cohorts. I'm going to have a hard time keeping track of all that. So when you don't want to receive the emails anymore, just say thank you for including me in this practice. I am not going to be able to attend any longer, so these emails don't make sense. Um, and I'll take you. I'll take you off the list. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done and congratulations well, to you. All. Well done. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Trudy and Lynn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How could we not? That made it so special. <laughs> but I, for one, shall miss you all and all your, your presence and your wisdom sewing. And uh, yes, I know you'll be thinking of us. We will. Ooh.
<laughs> I'll be seeing you all as I'm editing, so I'll, I'll still have some closeness, but it won't feel the same. <laughs> we'll have to talk, Maria. I can't have you doing that forever and ever. We'll <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Lots of love, everybody. Are you okay if I leave you if I leave the class today for you to do the spotlighting, John? As long as I'm co-host, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. bye, bye, everybody. See you all. Bye, Maria. Bye, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, you're so well. Thank you. Thank you all. Couldn't have done it without you. I tell you, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm going to make John the horse because I was just about to end the session. You'd have all disappeared. <laughs> you can have it. But, uh, not this time, not this time. We're not ready to go yet. <laughs> bye, bye. Happy sewing. Bye. Thank you. John, I, I, I'm ready to um, begin to um, attach the squares. And... Um, so uh, there's not that much instruction here. Um, and I remember when Maria was doing it, there was a question of whether you um, basted them on, um, which sounds, yes. or, or that sounds good to me, basting. Did you, did, you, um, did you do the method where you just pin first? Um, so there's, there's kind of two options. You do the initial pinning, that's mandatory. And then there's kind of two divergent paths. One, you can baste your squares separately. So you're going to replace the current pins with basting. So that's option one is to replace current pins with basting separately. And then uh, step two is to pin those basted squares to the face. So that is option one. Mm -hmm. Option two is to uh, take your pinned squares and baste them to the face, then remove the pins. So those are the two options. One of them, um, it, you know, you unpin to repin, so it feels yeah, like you're kind un of a... unpinning and then and then basting. Yeah, you're unpinning. Uh, you're you're well. You're not. You're you're basting. Um, so you have. You have your square. Yep. So you have your pinned square. Mm -hmm. And then while it is still loose, you baste around. Uh, you baste around the perimeter. Oh, Once it is oh, basted, oh, oh, loose, like um, separate from the frame. Exactly. Oh, yes. separate. That's what I meant by uh, replacing. Um, oh, okay. Just thing. individually. Ah. Yes. That is, there's a, a handful of, there's a pro, pros and cons to both methods. And I think that um, if you want to talk them through, we can, but otherwise, once you understand them, you sh might be able to consider mm -hmm. which makes most sense for you. Um, and then the other option is to, with it still pinned, you baste it directly to the face. Okay, I think I got those two. And now the other thing is that it says to um, put the needle through the, put the needle through the fabric vertically from front to back and pull the thread all the way through. Well, would it, wouldn't there be this, wouldn't so there be a knot or what are you doing there? What they're describing is instead of the method of the Namu Kibutsu stitch that uh, we teach to begin, they're talking about taking your needle, 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 Needle. We're talking about taking your needle. And oh, so, um, so you needle. need to be spotlighted if possible. Oh yes, sure. <laughs> Come back. Okay. Um, <laughs> so ordinarily, um, you're doing your namu kie butsu stitch by namu right kie butsu right right. So it's it's your your needle is visible on the same side at all right. times. What the instructions are saying is you want to go in perfectly perpendicular yes. all the way through. You're going to pull it all the way through, and then you're going to go up perpendicular and pull it all the way through. So you're breaking the namu kibutsu into two steps. I got, I got of, that part. 
So the question is um, going all the way through. What happens is there are not, or what helps you thread not going just all the way through the fabric? So you will start with the knotless start. Uh, the knotless, knotless start. Okay. Yes. Yes. So you will uh, on the first corner. I recommend. Let me reference rock you see. I recommend starting. Um, yeah, this is fine. I recommend starting at a one of the corners that are in the frame, but away from the corner of the frame. So either this corner or this corner, whichever feels most natural for your handedness and how mm -hmm. you like to hold material as you sew, mm -hmm. and sew toward the corner. So you're going to start away from the corner in the frame. So toward the corner in the frame, then do this other one. And what this does is these give you a chance. Once you've sewn just this edge, you'll have the opportunity to, if you've pinned or basted, if for some reason there's now a twist, uh, you can repin or rebaste if needed. So you'll do one edge and just focus on getting this edge straight. Then zoom out, kind of consider the whole square again. And if you need to repin or rebase at that time, you'll have the opportunity to do so. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, yes, definitely. Now, the other thing that it says is don't go through the silk. Well, how can you go straight through without going through the silk? You definitely go all the way through the silk. That's which what I step thought. are you looking? Yeah, it which says step? put put the needle. Oh, um, page nine, uh, uh -huh. right before the pictures on the bottom. Put the needle through the fabric from front to back. Pull the thread all the way through. Then looking at the back. Yeah. So it's what? Where did I see? Don't go through the. Maybe I, I imagine that. Let's see. The stitches will hard. Look at. I, I guess I made that up. I thought I read. You look it. at the bottom. Yeah. That image on the bottom right. Yes, yes, I did, and that's why I thought that was odd that I. I <laughs> Contradictory. Was, yeah. No. No. I. I guess I was reading in another place, but I thought I read. Don't go through. It. Yes, I did see the picture, and I thought, how did you do that? So yes. It's, yeah. It might have been on page eight. I know that that's where it talks about not going through when you're doing the frame. Doesn't matter, Richard. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yep. Thank All right, you. so let me make my decisions about the choices and uh, I'll let you know if I get stuck. Okay. Thank you. John, can can you? Uh, yes. I think I've done it wrong again. <laughs> can you explain how? So, uh, what makes you think that? Uh, because I've been sewing uh, on this side. That's the A side, mm -hmm. and on the B side, I'm it, I'm again. I guess too close to the line or. Well, at the end, I, at least. We were, I think, um, when you sent me your initial photos, there were some yeah. that were very near the line, but they never crossed yeah. it, and those were okay. So I think this okay. one is, is pretty okay. Um, is it okay? <laughs> I'm looking at the side that's on the left for me, so where the four is, yeah, it's the left. Yeah. Um, uh, this do you one? see that? Yeah, yeah. 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 There's a couple yeah. that are a little a little yeah. low in it why don't you will you fold it um get it to sort of this phase where you have this edge folded under so um i think we can see if you're able to get it line to line or fold 
this edge to this line without getting a big, um, let me see if I have my little paper diagrams. And I do, where are they? So what I'm asking is, so you have it like this, where you have your A sewn to your B. Go ahead and uh, proceed to the next step, which is folding it like this. So you're folding mm -hmm. this seam allowance down and flipping that whole fabric up. Then fold under this seam allowance on the A piece. So that's that yeah. first line of A, fold that under. Yeah. And see how close you can get it to the line on B without pulling the fabric so much that it causes any tension uh, yeah. on, that, on that seam. If you're able to get it pretty close, I think that's OK. Yeah. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. That. Let me know. Let me know how that turns out, and you can do it with. You might want to do all five um, yeah. with this step, and even go so yeah. far as to pin it, just so that you don't have to come back to it. I do recommend yeah. um, uh, pressing down this seam if you have an iron yeah. available with you uh, where you're located now. Not right now, but I I I, I will when I. I'll go home next time I go home, I'll bring it with me and, and do it there. Yeah. Okay. If you don't have if you don't have an iron, that's okay too. You can um it's it's a recommendation, but uh yeah. I, I these were done without iron. Um I've okay. done in fact the, the one I'm donating was done without ironing as well. I was on an airplane for most of it. Um oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I couldn't light <laughs> incense, but they definitely saw me chanting. So that was um, must have been a sight to see a six foot six guy <laughs> sewing after chanting on an airplane. Um, yeah, if you want, um, yeah, go ahead and do all five. Go ahead and fold it under using your fingers to do the pressing and then yeah. pin. And once you get all five, see how close you can get it to that chalk line underneath. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, I'm trying. So this is A, and this should be going. You understand the next step, though? Uh, I'm going to show you how I okay. understand it. Then. So it would be uh, like that. Yes. So yeah. on that folded underline, how close yeah. are you able to get it to the chalk line? Because we're, if possible, you want it to just cover the chalk line. Like if you if you look at my screen, so there's that bottom yeah. line of B. Yeah. You want you want A to just obscure it, to just cover it, so that it's not visible. Yeah. Is that possible with the amount mm -hmm. of fabric that you have? You don't want to uh, pull. Yeah, I'm not pull. Um, Actually, I have a lot. I have enough fabric to do that. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. Then you're good. I, I think. Okay. Okay. That's the primary purpose of why we sew in that seam allowance. As long as you can do that without yeah. pulling this seam or pulling this stitch, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. And so now I pin it like I've done this one. So I want to pin it now. So I'm mm -hmm. gonna. And once you've pinned, then I will have because then I have to sew it on on the A piece mm -hmm. or on A and B piece together. A and B piece it's together. It's on the A piece. Yeah, yeah, it's, but it's, it's uh, um, it goes all the way through. Okay, yeah, but it's the A line. Uh, you get as close to this seam as you can, mm -hmm. and you go all yeah. the way through, and on the back, it, you, you should have the visible. Yeah. So do you put the pins from opposite to the one that's already sewn, yeah? Um, I'm not sure I understand what you mean with that wording, but I can show oh. you quickly. I choose to sew with the um, 
I like to have this fold facing away from me. Yeah. That's just comfortable yeah. for, for me, but it's not required. Yeah. And because I'm, I like facing the fabric this way, I always have it where the needles are pointing towards me. So my okay. pinning will look like, it's a lot of fabric. My pinning looks like this, basically. This. One, yeah. two, three, four. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're welcome. Mm. But so you cannot sew on the line because the line is now on the on this the edge, line yeah. is on the edge, yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 So you're going to you'll be sewing as close as you can get to the the edge without going over. Yeah. Okay. And this you'll use this again when you're at the doing the uh, outer perimeter of the rakusu. So and these as well. You'll use this a lot. So it's um it's definitely a core okay a core thing. If you have any questions, you can um, you can email. You know, if you want to double check, you can email photos as always. Thank you so much. Yeah, Welcome. it's such a a comfortable backup that you're giving us. It's so helpful to know we can do yeah. that. Yeah. I, I'm glad. I'm glad. It's um, y'all are. Y'all definitely are, are doing something commendable by undertaking this remotely. Much easier in person. John? Yes? Um, when I finish sewing around this edge, because um, I'm just I'm, I'm moving on with the sewing around the edge, Mm -hmm. Do I do the middle line next or the outer edge next? Uh, the middle. So work your way from the inside to the out. And okay. you didn't ask this, but just because it's commonly a, a follow-up question, um, on the middle and outer, you'll do just through the front going all the way through to the back. Right, yes. Okay. And are they? Do you split the difference between the outer edge and the inner edge for where you put the middle one? That's precisely right. Yeah. Um, so commonly, what I will recommend is measure at, uh, at where the the corner, um, where the inner corner is. Measure on both sides. Mm -hmm. So you'll measure on both sides and you'll see if they're equal. You'll kind of take a note to the side if they are or not and do that all the way around. So your goal with this um, with this outer line, mm -hmm. you want the two lines to meet. Uh, in especially, you want these two edges to meet, especially on uh, the bottom edge. So this is my top corner up here out of frame. So mm -hmm. this is the bottom edge. You want the this line to meet these these two lines uh, perfectly because mm -hmm. these are going to be visible on the finished garment, yes. and that might mean that they aren't exactly like you can see here. Just eyeballing it, it looks like the distance from this line to this edge is smaller than here to here. And we can probably verify with measuring. So two point one versus two evenly. So that was required so that these could meet. So start with your bottom edge, measure the distance between the two. And you could even go so far as to draw this line out first, mm -hmm. then move on, and then just make sure that this line meets at that corner point. At the end of, once you're attaching straps, these corners will be fully concealed. Do still make an attempt to make the corners meet but if you need to, if, if there needs to be somewhere for extra, you know, wobble to go, um, do it in the top corners, not the bottom corners. Okay. So I've got one further question looking at your silk, sure. which looks really smooth and uncreased. Um, because I was folding it over when I was storing it, um, mm -hmm. so the silk was on the inside because I saw that as more fragile. Mm -hmm. I have got a line down the middle of mine. Can you see? I can. And it also feels a bit 
like am I supposed to stretch it out so that it's it's not at all got any it's, maybe it's got a slight bit of spare does that matter so what I'd start doing before we answer your question for a couple of weeks store it folded this way Okay. Because when you fold to just put it in the, the, the Rakusu envelope itself, in fact, you can see my Rakusu has a pretty ingrained fold inward this way. That's how it is stored in, in its envelope. Right. So um, so do That's that for a couple of weeks yep. and, and see what happens. Also, what you might consider for just a couple of weeks, this is not normal, but take a, oh, I'm glad I had one handy, this is convenient. Take um, a roll of like a paper towel roll or something. Uh -huh. And you could even store it folded around that to help um, make sure that, um, that where you've got that crease that wants to go, it wants to go this way to make uh -huh. sure that it neatly kind of loses any oh, sort that's of that. Good. That's good. Position. I haven't thought about I haven't thought about that. And of course it has to be silk to silk in the envelope. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be okay. I don't think there's there's too much extra material when I do fold it that way. I don't think so. No, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day you there you're guaranteed that there will there will forever be a crease in your material. Um, yes. that is just um, That's how it it's is. gonna get put in it's gonna get put in an envelope which gets put in a suitcase which though you try to put it on top to give it reverence and respect it's still gonna get tossed around by airline employees so you know it's we do what we can yes i've been so careful to just have nothing on top of it and it's very delicately covered but uh, you're right it's going to get thrown about a bit I think that is the due reverence. Um, there's also the, the guidance that if you can, I made the joke about checking luggage on an airline, but the, the, if you can put it in your carry on, do that. But yeah, with the reverence of nothing goes on top of it if possible. Yes. Glad that you're observing. Thank you. Welcome. John. Yes. I have uh, run out of thread right before the end of one of my inner lines. <laughs> so would this be a good opportunity for tr me to uh, practice the invisible end knot? Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe after yeah. what I did last night, <laughs> it's like yeah, no, that's... something to do every single time I sew. <laughs> well, it's a learning it's a learning enterprise okay um so yeah you can either for the remainder you can i uh, i want to give you the option you can either just cut a short length and just sew that short length with the hidden start and hidden finish or you can do a slightly longer than you would otherwise start your short end that little bit that you ran out for do that and then actually continue on the opposite the next edge if you would like you have the option. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, we're at the end of our time together. So thank you again, everyone for joining. Yeah. You can bow out. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Yes, of yeah. course. Thank you so much. Good to see you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Normal class next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.